We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. We are in Kabor village, Nyakach, Kisumu County. Where we meet Martin, a farmer with a very modern outlook to life. But he's taking care of his shamba single-handedly. Let us find out why. Martin lives and farms here by himself, and there's a good reason why he is alone. The children are in school, and his wife is in teaching college. Martin grows tomatoes and sukuma wiki. Right, so what are the challenges you face you know, every time you're farming? We don't depend on the irrigation system, we mm. depend on the rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in between, the drought can just come naturally and then we get them burnt. And for how long have you been farming? Five years. Five mm. years farming? Yes. And the production has not been good? Has not been good. Martin, what else do you have? Sometimes back, uh, I was keeping chicken here. Just recently, about three months ago, the ones I had here were attacked by some disease suspected to be some Newcastle, something like that. You suspected? Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, since I'm not a technocrat in the field, mm. so right. I just suspect. So. Yeah. Uh, well, Martin, you are in luck because we as Shamba Shape Up will bring for you right here the technical knowledge that you need. We'll get you the experts who will talk to you about your crops and hopefully, hopefully we leave you a better farmer than we found you. How does that feel? I'll appreciate that. Good, good, mm. good. I think we should surprise Beatrice. She comes in the evening and finds all these things, all these things you've been telling uh, Martin. Oh, yeah, surprise. What do you think? Uh, surprise, yeah. Okay, good. Martin, mm. what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, she will love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. A gentleman, mm. not like you, Tony. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, okay, then let's do it. So we got shaping up on Martin's farm. Lots to do on the Shamba. Tony, 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 what you have planned for Martin and, and, and Beatrice? No, I'm getting them an expert to talk to them about climate change and how to adapt to it. Okay, fine. Naomi, why are we whispering? Because it's a surprise. I'm going to see a man about the chicken. Okay. Uh, okay. As we prepare for the surprise, we brought in Mr. Njiroge Maina, an expert from Care Kenya. Climate change is affecting many farmers and the unpredictable weather is a major concern. Care Kenya is implementing a climate change project called Sustainable Agriculture in Changing Climate, as Mr. Miner explains. Climate change is here with us. It's a fact. And there are two things you can do about it. One is that you can help us stop further climate change by doing mitigation efforts like tree planting. Or you can also do adaptation uh, activities to, to find ways of living with the change. And the project will advise the farmer on how to plant uh, trees, where to plant, how to select the species, uh, how to select the actual site where the trees will be planted. The species that uh, we have recommended for this area are basically a tree that we call Graviria. There's also another tree that we call Terminaria browni. Uh, there's a tree that we call Lucina licocephala. Farmers know it, know it as a Lucina. Uh, we are also advising on Macamia, Lutea, a tree that people here call uh, Sierra. It's, uh, it's an indigenous tree in this area. We are also advising on eucalypts. But eucalypts basically because the farmers have a lot of interest in eucalypts. But we want to specifically plant eucalypts only in, uh, in wood rots because of their aggressive nature. As far as adaptation uh, processes are concerned, you can plant crops that are fast maturing. Uh, so that they can grow within the short length for season and that uh, are high value so that they can get you even better money uh, or better income from, from the market. What are the benefits as farmers can we get later on? Generally, uh, you'll be able to get shed, you'll be able to get uh, weed control or pepper. You'll also be able to get the wood itself after some time when the trees mature both for firewood, both uh, including construction timber. Mm -hmm. Depending on what trees you grow, the trees will also be able to do what we call nutrient uh, recycling. And what I mean here is that uh, when you do, you are, when you have a farm like this and it rains, the nutrients reach beyond 
the, the roots of the common crop. Mm -hmm. But if you plant the trees because of the fact that the trees have, have roots that land deeper, they'll be able to pick the nutrients, use them, and then bring it back onto the farm for usage through leaf fall. So that we call nutrient recycling. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, you are also creating a natural pension scheme for yourself because then the trees you plant today, you'll be able to harvest from uh, in future. Wow, that's, that's quite interesting. I think now the best thing to do is to start planting trees. Since the farm had not been used before for crop planting, Mr. Maina recommended that Martin plant a wood lot to begin with. This was done close to the road to make it easy to maintain, act as a farm wind barrier and easily accessible. When planting a wood lot, clear the bushes. Make and mark out measurements of two and a half by two and a half meters. Make holes that are one foot by one foot wide and two feet deep. Mix in manure with the top soil. Dispose of the plastic bag properly and plant the seedling. Plant at the start of the rain to ensure the plant gets enough water. If not, water the seedling. There are three main ways of planting trees. One is boundary method. This is where you plant trees along the boundary of the farm. The second is woodlot method. This is where you set aside a piece of your farm just for growing trees. The third method is crop line, where you plant trees and intercrop them. Remember, when planting using the boundary method, the spacing between trees should be 2 meters. For a woodlot, the spacing between trees should be 2.5 meters and 2.5 meters between rows. When planting using crop line method, trees should be planted 5 meters apart. This is to prevent too much shading of the crops. The best time to plant trees is on the onset of the rains. Prepare the holes well in advance to give the trees the longest possible period to receive rain. Care Kenya has been working with many farmers, especially on tree planting. One such farmer is Clementina. She is a good example of how a farmer should plant and maintain trees. We take Martin there to her farm to observe and learn more. Clementina, this looks very, very nice. How long have you been planting trees? Mr. Maina, what did she do right because this looks so nice? Management. Uh, management requires that the, on the, the first one or two years, you plant a crop in the, in the wood rot so that the crop helps you manage, manage the trees. Also, the produce you get from the crop compensates the, the cost of labor and cost of other inputs that you've done. So basically you're making a, you're starting to, to make money. Then after some time you start on the pruning. But the key thing is that you know when it's, the trees are due for pruning, when the branches start interlocking. As soon as that happens, it's a sign that the pruning is due. So Martin, looking at Clementine's wood lot, do you think you can measure up? Yeah, this is nice. And uh, I think I'm going to compete with this lady. You're going to compete with her? Yeah. That's very encouraging. When pruning, use a pruning saw. If not, a sharp panga will do. Start with the lowest branches. Cut from below the branch and then from above. Cut close to the back so that the back can grow over and heal the cut. Do not leave stumps of the branch as this will lower the quality of the wood. Do not over prune. Leave enough branches for the tree to make its food. A lot of work is going on into building the chicken shed, which will have a covered shed and external run for Sasok breed from Kenchik. Naomi, I never look at trees in the same way again. There are so many benefits of trees, I cannot even finish counting them. Well, the chicken shed is coming up very well, and we also have a unique breed of chicken from Kenchik. 
Oh, wow, you're going to surprise them with that. Uh -huh. They still have tomatoes and uh, there's still lots more to be done right after the break. While we have been away, a lot of shipping up has taken place. Let's see how Beatrice's is surprise is coming up. But we need to hurry before Beatrice gets here. We are still here in your catch, Kisumu County, meeting with Martin, who is learning a lot about planting of trees and a whole lot more. Martin has a seed nursery for his tomatoes. His tomatoes have not been doing very well. He needs to know more about the whole process. Isaac from Syngenta is here to offer him technical and expert advice. So Isaac, this is um, where Martin has put his nursery. Yeah. And looking at it, what do you think? Okay, uh, the dimensions of the nursery, uh, I can say uh, there is a problem there because normally nursery is uh, one meter by the convenient length depending on the amount of seeds a farmer has. Uh, like this one here, uh, this one is supposed to be one meter, and then the length is supposed to be uh, <coughs> a bit long enough to accommodate the seeds the farmer has. When you make something small, you crowd the seeds there, mm -hmm. and then plants will grow uh, while uh, competing. Uh, number two problem I can see here is the uh, insect and pest control. Mm -hmm. If you can look at the at the collards here, right. you will see the um, we have uh, insect uh, bites. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see some holes on the leaves like this, mm -hmm. that means they are they are insects. Mm -hmm. The way he's saying, mm -hmm. there is an aphid here, there is a thrip here, mm -hmm. and uh, other insects. Right. So we need to do proper uh, disease and pest control mm -hmm. for us to get a better crop. Normally when seedlings are young, they are normally affected by a disease called dumping off. Dumping off is a disease of uh, young plants, the seedlings, and it is normally controlled through spraying. And the best chemical you would have used ever, uh, Martin, was Ridomil. Ridomil controls the dumping off. As I showed you, the, the seedlings which were being fed on by pests, we use Actara to control mm -hmm. the pests. Mm -hmm. So if you spray your nursery with these two chemicals, Actara and Ridomil, you will have taken care of the pests and the diseases affecting the nursery. Remember, if you leave diseases and pests to affect your nursery, you will end up losing 100% of the nursery. So is there a variety that you can recommend that's very, very productive? Mm -hmm. We have a variety called Kilele F1. Mm -hmm. uh, Kilele F1 is a variety of tomatoes uh, which can do very well in the fields or in the open air. Mm -hmm. uh, this tomato doesn't require staking and it has higher yields. Uh, this uh, Kilele F1 has a longer harvesting period. Mm -hmm. You can harvest this tomato up to four months. Other mm -hmm. varieties can be harvested for one or one or two, two months. When preparing a nursery for planting tomatoes, clear the land. Prepare the soil by breaking it and making it fine. Make the beds one meter in width and make the length according to the amount of seed you have. Remove any extra twigs and leaves. Well decompose manure and mix in with the soil. Level the bed. Firm the edges to avoid soil wash off. Make your measurements of 6 inch intervals. Make the furrows with a stick. Very lightly spread the seeds in the furrows and cover lightly with soil. Wearing protective clothing, mix the Rito Mill and Actara in 20 liters of water. Drench the bed. Mm -hmm. 
most likely with dry grass and remove mulch after three days. Hey, Karis. Yes. Hurry up, hurry up. I need the gutters up. All right. With unpredictable weather, it's very important to harvest rainwater. The chicken shed is complete and the chicks are being introduced into their new home. Dr. Dennis from Kenchik has a word of advice about the new breed and vaccination. What makes this breed a special breed? Okay, this is a special breed because, uh, first of all, they are can be raised just like the Kenyajis. Eh? Yeah. They have uh, they perform better than Kenyaji in terms of uh, uh, egg production, mm -hmm. and they also put on more weight than Kenyaji, and they mm -hmm. mature very fast. Right. Yeah, and they can be fed just like Kenyaji on locally available mm -hmm. uh, uh, feed, like uh, you know maize jam, mm -hmm. uh, fish meal, and kitchen waste. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah, so, so they can be they can be used for food they, as meat, yeah. and they can also lay eggs. Yeah. After how long do you think this thing can be be free ranged? So okay, first uh, for the first 21 days, we're going to brood them, uh, feed them on uh, uh, commercial feed, and start them on chick mash or broiler starter. Then afterwards, now you can introduce uh, what you have uh, in terms of you know uh, if you have maize jam, what is available locally, you can give them. And up to this stage. Yeah. Have they been given any treatment? They've been given the first vaccination mm -hmm. at the hatchery level, but there are some others that you need to do in the field. I'll give you a vaccination program that you're going to follow to the end. When your birds are sick, make sure that uh, you contact your veterinarian or somebody who is qualified mm -hmm. to come, look at the birds, look at the pick up important clinical signs and uh, diagnose the problem and so that you can uh, prescribe the, uh, the drugs to take care of the, the right one. The right one. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important um, also when you're using antibiotics to consult uh, your veterinarian because farmers out here have been, using, have been misusing antibiotics. Mm -hmm. They've been giving their uh, chicken antibiotics throughout they give uh, insufficient doses and this one uh, is uh, risky because uh, misuse of antibiotics uh, can lead to resistant bacterial resistance and since the same antibiotics are used in the treatment of human beings we find that uh, the issue or cases of resistance is uh, a threat to even human medicine again there are something called withdrawal period. When you're using antibiotics on your uh, buds, it is important to adhere to the uh, withdrawal period given so that you don't uh, slaughter uh, buds that, uh, that still have the residues, the antibiotic residues in their system because the same can be passed on to the food chain, which is also a risk to human in terms of bacterial resistance to antibiotics. Beatrice is finally home from college and I hope she'll love the surprise. We give her a grand tour of the new chicken shed. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy about the chicks, yes. From this, the Tiaga Okay. Beatrice now tell me, did you like your surprise? Very much, I liked it. You loved it? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now I noticed in your kitchen you you have the three stones. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So how is how, how is cooking with the three stones? When using three stones when cooking, mm. I find it very difficult because it produces a lot of smoke. And uh, with the smoke, you suffocate. Mm -hmm. Yes, and even this, your eyes, mm -hmm. they spoil the eyes. Mm -hmm. So I find it very difficult. Right. Yes. So now here's a solution. This is jikopoa. Yes. Mm, it's very nice, yes. very economical. You, you have to use just a little bit of, uh, of, of pieces of uh, wood. Yes. Yeah, dry ones. Then, and it cooks very fast. And it has very little smoke. So it's uh, very healthy for you and your family. That, that's good. I like it. Okay. Imagine. 
I've not forgotten you. Yeah. Where do you charge your phone? About three kilometers from now. Three kilometers from, from here? From here. Right wow, now. that's far. Yes. What if I tell you I can be help you in a way that you can be charging your phone right here at home? I'll appreciate. You'll appreciate that? Yes. Okay, here we go. This is a D-light, it's a lamp. Thank you very much. Right? Yes. And that lamp you can use, it uses solar, very easy to use, and you can use it to charge your phone. So you'll be saving some little money. What you used to spend going to charge there. What do you think of that? That is very good. Good. Uh, quite saving. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. So Martin, did you enjoy the Shamba Shepa visit? Greatly, Tony. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful program. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh -huh. Actually, I think it will shape my farming and it will shape my family. It will even shape up the whole farming of the whole community because they will take the example. Wow. Mm. That's what we like to hear. Yes. Good, great. How about you, Beatrice? I really appreciate what you've done to us. And I hope that in future we'll be somewhere. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be better farmers than you we'll are be before. better farmers, yeah. <laughs> and even the family. We'll bring up the, the family will be at least up. Good, mm -hmm. good, good. <laughs> wish you all the best and I wish you all the best in your studies, okay? Welcome. Keep it up. Okay. All right, thank you. Easy Life offers three different stove models in different colors. They are made from high quality, long lasting material and can pay for itself in only a few months and lasts for three to five years. Easy Life stoves are clean, easy to use. Save you time when you're cooking, and it uses 50% less firewood, saving you money. D-light lamps use solar power and comes in various models. Leave the lamp outside during the day to charge in the sun. You can use D-light lamps to charge your phone, saving you time and money. Naomi and Marcel, it has been wonderful being in Martin's farm and contributing positively to the environment. And not just the environment, but their lives as well. Absolutely. Ah, it's that time again. What are you whispering about? I thought the surprise was over. It's that time again. We have to get down the tent. And you know what? Beatrice is making gully. You know what? You bring down the tent. Shamba Shepherd is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up. 